In Major League Baseball, there is a statistic called at-bats per home run. It is exactly how it sounds. How many at-bats a batter averages for how frequently he hits a home run. For example, if a player has 100 at-bats and hits 5 home runs, his at-bats per home run stat would be 20. He averages a home run every 20 at-bats. Simple math. For context purposes, I will only be looking at non-active players in this video for this statistic. I believe that is best to do because there are a handful of active players in the top 20 in this stat, but their placement could wildly change and fluctuate as their careers progress. The top 20 non-active leaders in this group include 8 Hall of Famers. Of the 12 not in the Hall of Fame, 8 either won multiple MVPs or led their league in home runs multiple times. The few players that don't meet those criteria include Albert Bell, Adam Dunn, and Manny Ramirez, who all had insane home run hitting peaks and are among the greatest home run hitters of all time. So, to no one's surprise, the players who hit home runs most often are some of the greatest sluggers of all time, former MVPs, and other home run hitting legends. However, there is one player that does not fit any of those criteria. If you were paying attention, you may have noticed I only mentioned 19 players of the top 20 on the leaderboard. The player I didn't mention stands out among the rest. This player ranks 14th all time in home runs per at bat and I guarantee the average baseball fan has never heard of him. There's a reason why most people probably have never heard of him and we'll talk about that as well as how this player's career could have ended up differently. This is the story of Russell Brannion. A Georgia native, Brandon was an outstanding high school baseball player where he was drafted by the Cleveland Indians in 1994. A third baseman later turned first baseman and outfielder, he had a slow start to his minor league career but exploded in 1996. Playing for the Class A Red Sticks, he won the league's MVP, setting the league record for most home runs in the season with 40. He also collected 106 RBIs that season to go along with a 575 slugging percentage. Brandon was just as good, if not better, next season, hitting 39 home runs with 105 RBIs and a crazy 620 slugging. Playing for AA in 1998, Brandon had a staggering 1.110 OPS, but missed many months due to injury. He came back at the end of the season healthy and even made his Major League debut in the second to last game of the season. Brandon spent most of 1999 in AAA, but his offensive numbers fell. However, he still showed his power, hitting 30 home runs for the Buffalo Bisons that season. Overall, Brandon only appeared in 11 games for the Indians in 1999 and put up not so good numbers. Despite the struggles in 99, Brandon was the Indians' number one prospect entering 2000. He showed tremendous power potential and rightfully earned himself the title of being a top prospect. Brandon started the 2000 season in AAA and found his old rhythm. He hit over 20 home runs before June and the Indians finally called him up for good. He only appeared in 67 games with 220 play appearances that year in the big leagues but performed well hitting 16 home runs with an OPS of 871 and an adjusted OPS of 115. As mentioned earlier, he missed significant time in 1998 due to injury. He also missed many games in 2001 and after a slow start to 2002, Cleveland traded Brandon to the Cincinnati Reds. Brandon spent 8 seasons in the Indians franchise, only to have 800 play appearances with them across 5 seasons in the big leagues. However, the trade may have paid dividends for Brandon, as he found his old rhythm and performed well the rest of the season while on the Reds. Although, in the offseason, Brandon injured his shoulder and had to have surgery on it. That shoulder surgery caused him to miss the first 2 months of the 2003 season and he experienced separate DL stints that season as well. Injuries have been a recurring theme for Brandon so far in his career, holding him back from his potential. From 1998 to 2003, Brandon had just a single season with at least 400 play appearances and zero with 500. Brandon was let go by Cincinnati after 2003 and he signed a minor league deal with the Braves for 2004. He was traded twice that year before finally making his season debut in late July with the Milwaukee Brewers. How did he do in Milwaukee once he was called up? Quite well. He hit 11 home runs in only 51 games and had an OPS of 849. Brandon was penciled in as the Brewers' everyday third baseman in 2005 and was even better that year, putting up career highs in batting average, on base, and adjusted OPS. 
However, the injuries piled on again and he missed over a month due to a fractured finger and played through other injuries that season as well. The next few seasons were more or less the same situation. From 2006 to 2008, Brannion played for five different teams and was subjected to a bench or platoon role due to him often missing games with injury. He still continued to match the ball, putting up big numbers in his diminished role. All he needed to do was stay healthy and get playing time, two things he hasn't been able to achieve so far in his career. That all changed in 2009. The Brewers let Brennan walk after 2008 and Russell signed a one-year deal with the Mariners for 2009. That year would be the best of Brennan's career, mostly because he finally saw consistent playing time. Brennan stayed mostly healthy throughout 2009, playing as the Mariners' everyday first baseman. Despite missing an entire month due to yet another injury, Brannion finally reached that qualified season mark, achieving over 502 play appearances in a season for the first time in his career, 11 years after making his Major League debut. In 2009 overall, Brannion had 505 play appearances, where he slashed 251 with a 347 on base and 520 slugging for an 867 OPS and 130 adjusted OPS. He slugged 31 home runs and drove in 76 RBIs. He led all Mariners players in home runs and OPS and was second in RBIs and extra base hits. Was this a turning point for Brannion? He set career highs in almost every hitting category and had the healthiest and fullest season of his career. Could he finally go on to bigger things in Major League Baseball? Well, short answer, no. As just mentioned, Brannion missed the month in 2009, which was coincidentally the final month of the season. He had dealt with a back injury that lingered into the offseason. Despite wanting a multi-year deal, this injury forced him to sign a one-year deal where he rejoined the Cleveland Indians, his first appearance with them in nearly a decade. Brandon missed the first few weeks of the season with that injury from the previous season, but was on fire once he returned. He was eventually dealt mid-season and returned to the Seattle Mariners, where he finished the year with them. He had another solid season in 2010, but for what seems like the 100th time, missed many games due to injury. This includes getting a toe injury after a hotel table fell on him and hurting his tailbone trying to pick up a flip-flop from the ground. Yes, those two actually happened. He's gone from simple shoulder and back injuries to getting hurt falling out of a chair. 2011 would be the final season of his career, being limited to a bench role in which he struggled mightily. Overall in his career, Brannion played in parts of 14 seasons from 1998 to 2011. He slashed 232 with a 329 on base and 485 slugging for an 814 OPS, 113 adjusted OPS, and hit 194 home runs. As mentioned at the very beginning of this video, he ranks 14th all-time in at-bats per home runs, averaging a home run in every 15.12 at-bats. Despite being in the big leagues for a long time, Brandon had only 3,398 plate appearances in his career, which is an average of 242 per season. For comparison, an everyday player in a full season will come to the plate well over 600 times, often over 700 times. Brandon was good enough to play every day, but there was always an injury or a regulation to a platoon role. Just when it seemed like he was ready to break out, he hit the DL and would miss time. He's, in my opinion, the biggest what-if player in recent years. He was always an excellent home run hitter throughout his entire career. That 31 home run season in just 505 play appearances came at age 33. Who knows how many he could have hit if healthier when younger and played consistently. We'll never know for sure, but I'm going to estimate what could have been. Russell Brannion batted 6 more often than anywhere else in the lineup, and according to Fangraphs, the hitter batting 6 will average 4.13 play appearances per game started. Let's assume Brandon averaged 145 games started from 2000 to 2010. Why 145 games? When looking at the top 25 leaderboard for games played among first basemen in 2022, 145 is around the average. 145 games started times 4.13 play appearances is 598.85. Let's round that to an even 600 play appearances per season or 6,600 across 11 seasons. Using Brandon's real life stats, we can determine how many of those play appearances would go for at bats. From 2000 to 2010, Brandon had 3,206 play appearances and 2,765 at bats, which is about 86%. 
86% of 6600 is 5,676, and using his real life 15.12 at bats per home run rate, that equals 375 home runs hit across the 11 season stretch, will round out to 400 given he may have played more games in 2011 and beyond. 600 play appearances average per season is also the conservative approach, as someone at Brandon's skills certainly may have averaged far more per season. It's no stretch to think he had the potential to reach 500 career home runs had he had a full, healthy career. Russell Brannion is a man that had the potential to hit hundreds of home runs, and he was one of the greatest sluggers of the 2000s decade, but was always limited in some capacity. He hit home runs more frequently than players such as Alex Rodriguez, Albert Pujols, Ken Griffey Jr., Mike Schmidt, among many others, but was also made of glass. He's the greatest home run hitter that you've never heard of until now.